Hi guys, welcome! In the previous episode of my Preparing for Ninja Class series, we've discussed a Flowing Blade Auto Attack build. This time, we'll take a closer look at another build for ninjas, which is a Shuriken Physical Damage build for PvE. This is a third episode of the series wherein we'll discuss the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips that can help you prepare for a specific ninja build. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. As discussed in the first episode of this series, the ninja class is the only class that can equip the new Wind Shuriken or Wind Monster type weapon. There is no size penalty when using this weapon, so you'll deal 100% damage on small, medium, and large size monsters. It is considered a melee type weapon but the related skills can be casted from a long range. This weapon may be used to cast physical damage skills and ninjutsu magic skills. But for this video, we'll only focus on the physical damage skills. To improve the damage output of this build, we want to prioritize increasing the following stats. Melee physical damage, physical penetration, skill damage, ignore death, and physical attack. It's also vital to have sufficient dex and hit to prevent monsters from evading your attack skills and to remove the variable cast time of skills. Another important aspect to consider is your skill cooldown and cast delay reduction. Having low cooldown enables you to cast the same skills more often, while a low cast delay enables you to cast all skills more often. Thus, a well-balanced stat distribution is essential for increasing the overall damage output of this build. With that in mind, let's discuss the next recommended stats for this build. Prioritize putting points on strength because it directly affects melee physical attack and hence will be the foundation for increasing your overall damage output. The next important stat is dex because it increases hit and thus ensures that your skills will land on the target. Getting at least 400 hit would be enough in PvE as boss monsters usually don't have a lot of fleeing. Dex also reduces the variable cast time of your skills and every 5 dex will give one attack. For beginners, it might also be useful to add some points on int for increased SP region. But if you already unlock the breakthrough of Leave It Behind, you can just leave int at 0 since Leave It Behind can already be used to restore SP. Lastly, you may also allot the remaining points on Vit for survivability, especially when fighting against boss monsters. Up next, let's discuss the most important skills for this build. First, for ninja skills, you should put points first on the Shuriken Physical Skill Branch. First is Dart Cast which is a single target physical damage skill that can be casted from a range of 5 meters. Its breakthrough can hit up to 3 targets wherein the other 2 targets can receive 80% of the main target's damage. There's a Class A rune that increases its hit and damage. Dart Cast has a low attack multiplier and a short cooldown so this is only useful for early game farming. But for late game, you can just allot 2 points to unlock the next skill. Next is Explosive Shuriken which is a delayed damage AoE skill. It throws an explosive dart to the ground which deals 2 times fire damage to enemies within 3 meters after a 2 second delay. Its damage and explosion range can be further enhanced by these Aesir and Advanced runes. Similar to Dart Cast, it's not that useful in PvE so you may just allot 3 points as prerequisite for the next skill. Next is the passive skill Wind Monster Cultivation, which increases attack, hit, and pen when equipped with a physical shuriken. There are also Aesir runes which increase ignore death and physical penetration when using this type of weapon. As for the remaining skill points, you can allocate them on the following buff and auxiliary skills. First is Force Souls which is a buff that summons an elemental aura around you. This will convert the element of your skills according to your chosen element. It also provides a 20% increase in the corresponding elemental attack. There are AC runes which grant extra stats and damage reduction corresponding to your chosen elemental aura. Next is Leave It Behind, which is a channeling skill that continuously restores both your HP and SP for 3 seconds. This is a good defensive skill as you'll get up to 25% damage reduction while channeling if this AC rune is activated. Then max out in Jutsu Thousand Shadows to summon Shadow Clones, which can increase your DPS and also to tank the damage of boss monsters. After that, get level 3 Misty as prerequisite for Shadow Slash, which increases your casting range by 3 meters while hiding. 
Take note that you can only attack while hiding if you use the Acer Rune skill Fog Cutting. And then put the remaining points on Shadow Leaf for mobility. Next for the Kaguro and Obora third job, the most important skill to get is Wind Dart Cast, which is an attack skill that deals physical damage to all enemies in front of you. Each additional enemy with the AoE range will increase its damage by 10%. So if there are 10 enemies in range, there will be a 90% increase in its damage. There are several runes that can further enhance the damage of Wind Dart Cast. First is the AC rune Wind Dart Cast Enhance, which gives a 30% increase in damage. Second is the AC rune Wind Dart Cast Multi, which grants a 40% chance to cast Dart Cast when using Wind Dart Cast. Third and last is the Unrestrained Wind Class S Advanced Rune, where in the third line significantly improves the damage of Wind Dart Cast if there is no enemy near you. Other auxiliary skills you may get are Hidden Shadow to boost the damage of Shadow Clones when hidden and Ninjutsu Dodge to slow down an enemy and teleport to its location. There's also an option to unlock the Ninjutsu Magic Skill branch in order to get Psychic Spell Ogare, which is a magic skill that summons a Thunder Beast around you for 18 seconds, dealing wind magic damage to one enemy unit every second. However, we'll not focus on increasing magic attack, so expect that it will only add a little extra damage. You may opt to activate these runes to boost the Thunder Beast damage and duration. Once you've changed into fourth job, you can prioritize allocating your time quicksand on the following skills. First is Wind Shuriken Swift Shadow, which is the primary damaging skill for the Shuriken Physical Damage build. It throws the Wind Shuriken to a designated area, inflicting physical damage per second to all enemies within its range. It lasts for 5 seconds and its damage is based on your Wind Dart Cast skill. So all damage multipliers for Wind Dart Cast will also affect the damage of Wind Shuriken Swift Shadow. And this includes the increased damage for every additional enemy within its range. Due to its resemblance with the Cart Tornado skill of Novus Guardian, it's referred to as Shurinado skill. You can also level up this enhancement skill to further enhance the damage of Shurinado by 28%. Next, get the Universal Nature skill to create an elemental array under the boss monster. The array will clear all field skills and consume your own elemental aura. When the enemies are inside the array, their corresponding elemental damage reduction, def, and mdef will be reduced, and they will be inflicted with abnormal status. Another useful 4th job skill is 16 Nights, which removes the fixed cast time of skills and increases mpen by 30% for 25 seconds. These two enhancement skills will provide additional 15% ignore mdef and increase its duration from 25 to 30 seconds. Lastly, you should get the Quick Escape which is the anti-fatal mechanic of ninjas. The trigger chance is quite low so you can enhance it with this class S star rune. The general skill combo when fighting boss monsters would be to manually buff yourself first with 16 nights to remove the fixed cast time of skills. Then cast Breaking Dawn which is an AC rune that decreases physical penetration by up to 30%. However, bear in mind that you cannot enter hiding status when Breaking Dawn is active. This buff can be removed by casting 16 Nights, that's why you need to cast first 16 Nights before Breaking Dawn if you want to keep both buffs. Next, summon your chosen elemental aura using 4 souls. And then create an elemental magic array under the boss monster using Universal Nature. Since Universal Nature will consume your aura, you need to cast 4 souls again to regain your elemental aura. Other optional skills you can use before attacking are Ninjutsu Thousand Shadows so that the Shadow Clones can tank damage and Psychic Spell Ogara for a little increase in damage. Afterwards, you can start Auto Battle with both Wind Dart Cast and Shurinado in the Auto Skill slot. If the target keeps on moving, you can reposition using Shadow Leap. If your HP and SP falls below 25%, you may cast Leave It Behind for sustain. Make sure to observe your clones and buffs carefully and recast them when needed. You may put Breaking Dawn, Four Souls, and Psychic Spell Ogara in the Prepare for Elite skill bar for faster recasting of buffs.
when it comes to auto farming, just put in the following in the auto skill slot. First will be your primary attack skills which are Shurinado and Wind Dart Cast. Using these two skills simultaneously can greatly improve farming efficiency since you can just cast Wind Dart Cast when Shurinado is still in cooldown. You just need to make sure that Wind Dart Cast can also one-hit kill the monsters you're farming even if there's just one enemy within range. Next for SP Sustain, you can put Leave It Behind if you lack SP Discharge or if you don't have the following gacha headgears. Next to buff your damage, you can also put 4 souls for elemental advantage and breaking dawn for 30% penetration. However, if you can already one-hit kill the monsters you're farming even without a buff from breaking dawn, then you can replace it with fog cutting for longer casting range. Personally, I think the skill combo and timing of the shuriken physical damage build is easier to master than the Flowing Blade Auto Attack build. It's also a better build for farming due to the long casting range of skills. But at the end of the day, you should choose a build based on which playstyle you enjoy more. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, these are the runes that can help increase your overall damage output. If you have remaining gold medals and contribution, just activate the runes that improve your chosen auxiliary skills. For advanced runes, the most important skill rune to get is the Unrestrained Wind Class S rune where in a high value for the first two lines plus activating the third line would all be super important in increasing the overall damage output of Wind Dart Cast and Shurinado. Other skill runes you may get are as follows. First is Cicada Knight Class S Star Rune with a high percentage in the first line for increased quick escape trigger probability. Second is Thunder Wolf's Protection Class S Rune with a third line activated for it to hit additional two enemies near you. Third and last is All Direction Shadow Class S Rune which increases the damage dealt and reduces the damage received by Shadow Clones. Your clones will be very handy when fighting against boss monsters since they'll get the aggro of the MVP. As for the attribute runes, prioritize upgrading the following to increase your damage. Up next, let's dive into the suggested equipment set and cards. For a weapon, the most suitable would be the Wind Shuriken weapon, which increases strength, hit, and ignore death, as well as the damage of Wind Dart cast by 1% for every refined level plus 1. This can be crafted in Glassheim and upgraded to tier 8 using the following materials. Its Sin version, when refined to plus 15, will grant a total of 18 strength, 50 hit, 20% ignore death, 5% physical damage, and 30% wind dart cast damage. For weapon enchantment, aim for a high PDI or strength stat and sharp blade or morale for fort enchant. For weapon cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any of the following race, size, or element damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you are farming. However, when fighting against large size MVP monsters, it's best to activate the inside effect of Minora's card which grants plus 50% ignore death. Just inlay two Minora's cards on your weapon and use gears that give additional damage to large size monsters such as the plus 5 Ninja Clothes Cold Night Song or Abyssal Cry Gacha Headgear. If you have budget for MVP cards, then you may use the following cards. For offhand, you may use the new Ninja Exclusive Offhand Arm Armor for additional strength and melee physical damage. This can be crafted in Orc Village and upgraded to Tier 8 using the following materials. Its synth version will be the best in slot as it gives a high amount of melee physical damage, especially at plus 15 refinement. Possible alternatives are Rosa Chain if you lack Ignore Death, or Skeleton Bracer for melee damage and attack percentage. However, its extra damage passive won't trigger with AoE attack skills. For offhand enchantment, aim for high PDI or strength stat and armor breaking for fort enchant. For offhand cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any of the following element damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you're up against. But if you're lazy to switch cards, you may also use any of the following cards. 
for armor, you may use the Ninja Clothes Cold Night Song since it can trigger the inside effect of Minora's card. Aside from that, it grants a very high melee physical damage percentage. Other options are Perseverance Armor for more pen and attack percentage, or the Chosen's Armor for more strength, dex, melee physical damage, and attack percentage. For Armor Enchantment, aim for a high PDI or strength stat, and Morale for Fort Enchant. For Armor cards, you can use any of the following cards. For Garment, the most suitable for this build is a plus 12 or higher White Duke's Manteau which is a synth version of Ancient Cape. This is because it grants Strength, Ignore Death, Attack Percentage, and Skill Damage Percentage. For Garment Enchantment, just aim for a high PDI stat. For Garment cards, you can use any of the following cards. For Footgear, the options are the synth versions of Wolf Grandma Slippers or Rune Boots. The former grants melee physical damage, attack percentage, and ignore death while the latter grants a higher attack percentage. You can check my footgear synthesis video to know which crafting materials to prepare for for this new feature in RO 2.0. For footgear enchantment, just aim for a high PDI stat. For footgear cards, you can use any of the following cards. But for late game, it would be better to use one of the following MVP cards. For accessory, the options are Hermit's Bundle for Strength, Melee Physical Damage, and Attack Percentage. We can also use Cat Paw Stamp for Strength, Dex, and Physical Penetration, or Ring of Contract for a high attack percentage and strength. For accessory enchantment, just aim for a high PDI stat and Sharp Blade for fourth enchant. For accessory cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any of the following element or race damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you are up against. If you're lazy to switch cards, then you may use any of the following cards. For headgears, there's a lot of options for gacha and non-gacha, so just choose the ones you have that will give the highest skill damage, melee physical damage, Physical Penetration, Ignore Death, Attack, and Cast Delay Reduction. For Headwear Enchantment, aim for the following stats in each slot, especially the Morale and Sharp Blade 4th Enchant. For Headgear Cards, you may use any of the following cards. But if you have a high budget, then you may use the Adhumbla card. And for Pets, these are the ones that can improve your damage output. However, you may also use pets that can resurrect such as Ubun and Osiris, or pets that can taunt enemies such as Orc Warrior and Orc Baby. Lastly, here are the other things you need to prepare. First, if you're going to multi-job your main character, then prepare 88 Big Cat Coins as it's unlikely that a job transfer voucher will be given for free. If you just want to experience the class, then you may free up a character slot before the release date. Then create a new character and go through the Creatura Academy program to change into the Ninja Fort job in just 2 days. Second, stock up on your guild contribution and gold medals for the Aesir runes, as well as dusty and glittering rune stones for advanced runes. Getting decent advanced runes requires some luck so save as many rune stones as you can. Third, make sure that the stats in your guild blessing and guild prayers are aligned with the corresponding build. Prioritize increasing your pen, ignore death, attack, and elemental attack. Fourth, for Oracle Mirror, you may extract the stats of the following. A high refined combustible knife for physical penetration. A high refined chieftain's axe for ignore death. A high refined claw for physical attack. Or a high refined build disarm for damage to MVP. Fifth, aside from getting a physical attack unlock and deposit rewards in your handbook, you also need to invest in these cards and headgears which provide strength, dex, and hit unlock and deposit rewards. You can also unlock the following jobs for bonus stats. And lastly, save as much zenny and materials as you can since some of the gears are not yet available in the current patch. You'll be needing at least plus 10 refinement on some gears, which will be quite expensive. Also, stock up on more coins for enchanting the new ninja exclusive gears. 
Alright, so far we've discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips to prepare for the shuriken physical damage build of ninjas. Stay tuned for the fourth and final episode of my Preparing for Ninja series as we'll focus more on the ninjutsu magic build. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.